are we live? Are we live? We are live. We are live on the People's Paradise Podcast. My mouth is dry. I really need the Snickers. I actually know we're actually nine months since I put a Snickers in my mouth. I haven't had a Snickers, a Twix bar. Like, you know, because you know I me, mean? I'm the type of person. I like to eat unconventional sweets. Like, I told you my recipe already, but I'll take dark chocolate and melt it into a bowl, and then chop up bananas into slices, and put the banana slices in the bowl with the dark chocolate, put a little bit of whipped cream on it, mix it all up, mix like a great low-key ice cream smoothie. That's my recipe, and you can't take it. Matter of fact, don't steal that. Do not steal my recipe. That is mine. That is mine. No one one can have it. No one can steal my recipe. That is mine to have. But what's going on with you, man? We back here live again on the People's Paradise Podcast. What's going on with my people, man? Shout out to my people listening to me live on the podcast. Shout out to my people live on the Periscope on the YouTube live. Now let's start the conversation. This might be a show. This might well, this podcast might only be maybe two hours at the most because I gotta go get some birthday gifts from my aunt tomorrow. But um, what's going on? So yesterday. I spent $13, $13.57, I calculated, of my hard-earned cash, that's not even counting the two Uber rides I had to use to get there and get back, to go watch Beauty and the Beast in the movie theater, shout out to MRF, the MG, what's up with you, baby, welcome to the podcast, I spent some of my hard-earned money to go into the theater, sit, eat any popcorn, get a round of applause for that, I resisted my urge, I resisted my urges, I resisted, shout out to the MRF, the G, he said, Uber sucks, get Lyft, everybody hating on Uber now, I don't know why, but I'm probably gonna get Lyft, because they're charging $16 for a five-mile ride, um, I actually, I actually proud of myself. I sat in that theater for a two. Uh, first off, I guess. So I see. We wish I start off starting like. Six what's up with you, baby. Um, first thing I gotta say. I uh, holly yo, what up with you, man? How you doing? You weren't even here, y'all. I just hate on them having some. <laughs> I had eight of them, which y'all do G. First off, great movie, great movie, really, really great movie. And I've been, I've been lightweight kind of critical of Disney movies for the last year or so because some of them, the plot lines seem a little bit too corny. They did a really good job with this movie. They did, they did so good. They did so good with this movie. When I got home, I actually went online and found a bootleg version of the original Beauty and the Beast and watched it. Like it was a good one. The acting was good. I like how, um, I think the first thing I can say about the movie I liked about it the most was I liked how they set up the scenery. Like, I like how they put up, I like how they built the town up. I want, I want to see a cure for wellness. <laughs> cure for wellness. But I like how they set up, I like how they set up the scene. When you watch the movie, you see how they built up the town. They built up, even while they have the castle with the, the glittering chandeliers and the dancers and the singing, how they like they really paint they really painted a beautiful picture of the actual movie in the movie. So I really did like that. Like it, you do look at the movie, you do look at the movie, and the movie in a lot of ways, the movie, the setup of the movie, the architecture of the movie in itself look better in the live look better than the actual original one. That's and that's comparing a live action movie to a cartoon. So I really did love that. They did a really good job on that. Um acting was really great. Shout out to my main Luke. I can never pronounce his name right. Luke Gyllenhaal. Luke Gyllenhaal. The guy who plays. He's the guy who plays Gaston in the movie. And he the guy who played Dracula and Dracula on Toad. Cool as ass dude. He's hella, dude he's hella, he was hella funny. It was weird because I kept thinking he don't, to me personally, I didn't think he, he do kind of look like Gaston because they put that fake hair, that put that fake wig on, t- on top of his head. So I guess in a sense, he do kind of look like him. But at the same time, I don't really think he did that much. But he did, he still was hella funny. He did a good job. The funniest dude in the whole film to me was that, um, most people who listen to this are grown. So I don't know how many of y'all ever watched Beauty and the Beast. I'm the only, I might be the only Disney nerd here. But when I watched it, there was this one dude in the movie, um, Bafu. He's like this little short hobbit guy. He's, he in the movie, it's funny because in the cartoon movie, he's not really, he's just a goofy guy. In the cartoon movie, he's just a goofy guy. He's just a goofy, ugly guy who's following his friend who he looks up to, who's dick he rides over time. But, in the movie, it's weird because in the movie, they actually make him gay. Like, they actually, shout out to M.O.F. G. He said, bro, I'm the biggest Disney nerd. Shoot. Have you ever seen House of Mouse? That'll let me know how big of a Disney nerd you are. Have you ever seen House of Mouse? Um, it's weird because in the, in the live action movie, they actually make him gay. Like, they actually do make him like a homosexual, which I didn't know if that was necessary or not. It did add a, a funny as it did add a funny aspect to it.
Yeah, she did a good job, too. She did a good job. She did a good job, too. She did a good, she did a good job. Go see the movie Beauty and the Beast. The only thing I kept thinking about was when you see her in the movie, it's to me personally, and I told I was sitting next to this girl, Miss Me and this girl was talking after the movie, and I'd asked her, her opinion about the movie. She said, I like it, it was cool. Me personally, I think that she might have been I think that she might have been too young to California Adventure and Disneyland. But I said I said the problem was with Emma Watson is I think she looked I think she looked too young to be in the movie. Like, I think she looked too young to be Belle. Like, she looked too young to be trying to fuck this big-ass lion gargoyle. Which, by the way, shout out to the Beast. The Beast is faced creature that nobody would want to marry. But he actually looked pretty cool. Like, if you actually look at it, you don't even got to see the movie. You can just go online and, and Google Beast from Beauty and the Beast. In a real-life movie, in a, in a live-action movie, he actually looked pretty cool. Like, if I was him... I really would be in a debate if I were, I would really be debating with myself if I wanted to go back. I probably would have stayed a beast. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I probably would have stayed a beast. Which and then hasn't even that's kind of strange because like in the movie. So in the movie. In To allow him to stay, to allow her to stay in his house for a few nights or so until she could get back on her feet. Now, because he refused her, she put a curse on him and turned his whole household into dishes, plates, and shit, and turned him into like this lion, Goliath from Gargoyles looking creature. Now, me personally, and this is why I think sometimes fairy tales, this is why sometimes fairy tales don't make any sense to me. Why would you, and I want to ask you guys' opinion on this. Shout out to Stacey X. It was a great movie. Shout out to Drake's because he said I, I was going to watch Beauty and the Beast, but it seemed bad. I want to ask you guys, because I'm curious. I want to ask you guys' opinion on this, because it's really interesting. If an old woman showed, if an old homeless woman, man or woman, showed up at your front house and asked to sleep in your bed and asked to sleep in your sleep in your bedroom and offered you only a single fucking rose as payment for sleeping in your house, would you let her? I'm curious. Would you let her? I'm curious. I really want to know. Would you let her? MOFNG says, seriously, stranger danger. That's what I'm saying. Like, no, like, no, like, no, no, like, he did, he, like, like, he, he literally, he literally did, he literally did what, like, anybody would, he literally did what anybody with common sense would do. Bitch, no, and closed the door and locked it. But she took offense to that and was like, oh, so you're greedy. You have a heart full of ice. You do not deserve the blessing that God has bestowed upon you. I'm going to curse you and turn you into a gargoyle. And I'm like, like no, no bitch. Like no bitch. Like it, it, it does. It. I think they really did kind of put him in a. In the original, he was a young boy as well. <laughs> Shout out to him off of them. M O M O M of them. M G. He said in the original, he was a young boy as well. Stranger danger. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's like it's common sense. You're not gonna let some random stranger walking up just because they presented you with a rose. I don't care how pretty the rose is, but you're not stepping over this porch. No, it, no, not today. But. And then it was cool because, like, I like how one thing I was thinking about is when I watched the movie. You know, in the cartoon movie, in the uh, Disney movie, they have the talking furniture, the talking fan, the talking candle, the talking clock. I was trying to figure out how they was gonna make that look realistic but still cool with the live action movie, and they actually did a really good ass job with it. Like, I like how the clock. Shout out to the uh, Ian McKellen. The clock was Ian McKellen who played Gandalf. And uh, shout out to Chloe Cam. What's up with you, Chloe? How you doing, baby? Shout out to uh, Ian McKellen. Ian McKellen played the clock. Ian McKellen was a dude who played Gandalf. He played Gandalf in Lord of the Rings, and he also, and he also played, um, and he also. Can you be the beauty to my beast? Of course, baby. Of course, I'll be your beauty. And he played. Uh, he played um, Magneto in X Men. He played Magneto in X Men. So shout out to him. It was. It was weird hearing hearing Gandalf's voice come from a clock. Like I kept thinking about this. It was weird listening to Gandalf's voice come from this clock and talk. I save rubbish. 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 Like it was weird hearing that, but. I like I liked it. I was it was cool with that too. Gandalf the clock. Yeah, it was just like that. Gandalf the clock. I like Gandalf the clock. Lumiere. Lumiere the candle. I think Lumiere the candle was cool too. He had a lot. Of, I like how you know it was weird. And I was thinking about this. 
in the movie they never clarified they never clarified in the movie if it is set in France or they just have they're just influenced by French culture because they do have a lot of quotes in French and it's funny how Lumiere the Candle when he speaks English he speaks it with a sexy French accent so it sounds so cool and smooth and suave and all international porno star movie-ish but the funniest thing about it is, and I kept, I was thinking about this, is, and I don't know how much experience you guys have with this. I have some friends from France. You know, I've, and I've had a lot of conversations with people from France. And nine times out of ten, when somebody from France speaks English that I've met, it usually sounds terrible. Like, terrible. Every time I've heard somebody from France speak English, it sounds so chopped. Up and cock, cock, cock. like it sounds like it sounds like they grind in the it sounds like they grind in the words between boulders inside their jaws like it it, it never sound cool I, but in the movie in movie form Beauty and the Beast it sounds so beautiful and smooth and swell like I always wanted that M of them M of them G said French grammar is way different so it's hard for them now that makes sense and it's the same it's the same for us oh you speak French okay so he speaks French okay cool you know again he go over here getting he over there putting that French, uh, putting them French fries on the bitch, on the boots, on the boots lips. Nah, I mean, and I, and I and I understand. I'm not judging them for that, but it's just, I'm not judging them for that. But it's just fun. It's just funny how that is. Like in the movies, displayed as something so sexy and suave, but in real life, it's like no, and it's just quite the opposite. It's kind of like how when I, it's kind of like how when I was going to college, everybody always told before I went to. Oh mon ami, je parle français. I speak French. That's cute. It's kind of like how when I went to school. um before I went to college, everybody always said how hot Brazilian girls were. And then I actually made friends with a lot of Brazilian girls and Brazilian guys in my college. And I found out, no, they do not all look pretty. They, they at, the, at most, they all look average. Like, it's kind of like that. You kind of get disillusioned. But, and then the funniest thing about the movie was, back to Beauty and the Beast. And the funny thing about the movie was, is, so Gaston, shout out to Gaston. Shout out to Jake, Luke, Gillenall, whatever his name is. Gaston, he's this great guy. Uh this nigga was, you know, I do, I do, he, so he wanted all Swedish girls are models, after no, hell no, 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 Swedish girls, not all Swedish girls are models, no, no, that is a very, very misleading, uh, misleading, misleading myth, so shout out to Gaston, Gaston, Gaston wants to marry Belle, in the movie Gaston is just fixed on marrying Belle, even though Gaston has I, I, this is why I didn't get it. This is why I don't get it. Maybe I'm looking at it from maybe because I'm older now when I watch movies, even though I did enjoy the movie, I do kind of look at it with just a little hint of skepticism. This girl was so, you mean to tell me this girl was so, this, you mean to tell me this girl was, this, you mean to tell me this girl was so bad, she looked so pretty that there was nobody else in the village that you wanted. There was nobody else, literally nobody else in the village that you wanted. This motherfucker literally, this motherfucker literally took her father in the movie and tied her father up to a tree and left her in the forest to be eaten by wolves. So in his mind that because he'll die when she comes back to the village, she will have nobody to help her and support her. So she'll have no choice to run to him. Nigga, that is too much. And the saddest thing about that is, is I believe back in those times in the 17th century and the 16th century, I think that was pretty common. Cause it was, it was, you know, back then, back in them days, like I always say, that concept of true love and the romantic, my long lost, my my other half, the person who's who I who I've been looking all my life and crossing the whole world and globe for, crossing Mars, Jupiter's for, that's some new con. That's back in the day, they really didn't have true love like that. Half the time, it just was really half the time. Half the time, it was really no answer, no answer to what. What would you ask me? Half the time back in them days, it was just, you know what? You're pretty and poor. I'm ugly and rich. You're going to marry me. Now, back in them days, that's what, that's what it used to be like. So, I can, I, I kind of, I'm, I, I, it's, it's just straight, it's just straight, it's just straight you know, on that aspect. You know, I always say, romance like movie tale, fairy tale romance, it always looks a little bit different if you try to put that scenario a scenario in a fairy tale movie always looks just a little bit rapish and pedophilish if you put it and put it in an actual uh, movie now as we did in our bar said any advice to someone who's going through a depression 
Yeah, it's hard to say because I would have to, I'd have to, I'd have to learn more about what you're being depressed about. You know, I have to learn which, what are you depressed about. I can't just say, hey, you in a depression? Go eat. Go eat, go eat, go eat some sunflower seeds. Leonard HB says smoke weed. Depending on what weed, depending on what weed, don't smoke that wrong shit. Don't smoke that wrong shit and go crazy. But um, Ben Drake Forge when he said any any advice to someone who's going through art, going through art, any advice to someone who's going through autism. <laughs> uh, shoot, I don't know. Uh, he'll buy it, buy it, get a shirt, get a shirt, and get a shirt and paint Timmy from South Park on it just to be on, just to be on brand. That would kind of be, that'd be kind of dope. Like if that'd be kind of like though, if they have like their own artistic clothing line, which is all artistic characters from different cartoon shows, like Timmy from South Park. Um, what's Timmy from South Park? Um, shit. Goku, baby Goku from Dragon Ball, because baby Goku was kind of autistic. Let's just all admit that he was kind of autistic. We, we let's let's just be fair and admit that. But the reason is I keep I keep I keep I keep, but I don't have quote forty six chromosomes. What does that mean? But I think yes. Yeah, so, so overall, to anybody, I'd recommend watching it. I do like the way I do find the Beast the movie. If you do watch the movie, I, I'll tell you, you will like the way the Beast look. I do like the way the bees look. He do look hella clean. And that's why I was saying, first off, anybody listening right now, I want to ask, even my parents could ask you guys this too. Did you, do you guys, did you guys ever see how the beast look from Beauty and the Beast? Did you guys actually see what the beast from Beauty and the Beast looks like? Any advice for someone who's going through depression? No, no, no. Listen to happy music, bro. Listen to happy music. Listen to happy music. Chris GTTTM. Shout out to Chris. What's up with you, baby? Listen to happy music. But I was asking that because before the movie came out on Twitter, there was like this weird wave of tweets that was coming from random women around the world who got to see an early screaming screening of the movie. And what they said was a lot of girls said that the prince that the beast turned into, a lot of people said the beast, the prince that the beast turned into before, um, after he died or whatever, whatnot. The beast was hotter than the prince. Like a lot of girls said, that the that the beast was actually more better looking than the prince, which I thought was kind of weird. I mean, the prince wasn't ugly. He was he was okay looking. He wasn't like beautiful. He wasn't a Brad Pitt or a Johnny Depp in his day, but he he was okay looking. It wasn't like he was the ugliest nigga in the world. But the beast, but still, even in the beast, looked kind of. But but even in the beast, still looked kind of cool. Like he had a cool design. He had this, like I say, he in a lot of levels, he looked like Goliath from Gargoyles. Like he looked like a brown furry, a furry Goliath from Gargoyles. I thought it was pretty cool. I like how in this movie, like they made him all witty and funny and well read and intellectual and was just something to take in consideration. Because if you are a prince back in those days, if you were rich, you were afforded, you were afforded a pretty expensive education. So you probably. You know, you probably did speak with full sentences. You probably did learn to speak a different language. You know, back in them days, actually, back in them days, it was. I think back. I actually think I read somewhere where back in those days they had like a standard called being a Renaissance man, like being a Renaissance man, and being a Renaissance man back in those days would be you'd have to learn how to speak two or three languages, learn how to play one instrument, know how to write poetry, know how to horse ride, know how to sh uh, do archery, all of these things. Not just one or two. That you had to be good at all of these things. People who got who. Were, Multitask, multitask able nowadays. We need some more multitask available people. But I don't know. Overall, it was a good movie. I like movies like that. That's why I'm all for. I'm all for supporting these live action films that they're making. Whether it's the Aladdin's, whether it's the uh, Lion King's. If they make a live action Lion King, first off, by the way, I don't know if y'all noticed, they actually are producing a live action Lion, a, a live action Aladdin right now. They're literally doing the casting calls for actors to be in Aladdin right now. And they're trying to they're trying to have it as an all Middle Eastern cast, which I'm kind of pissed off because I would have loved to have been the genie. Or, I'd even have took Jafar. I would love to be Jafar, but I'm gonna tell you right now, they could they can fuck up a Lion King. They can fuck up Lion King. They can fuck up Beauty and the Beast if they they didn't. You can fuck up Cinderella. You can fuck up Prince the Princess Wong. I'm gonna tell you right now, Disney. I don't know if you're watching right now. Please, 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 do not fuck up Aladdin. Do not fuck up Aladdin. Aladdin is literally, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, nigga, Aladdin was the shit to me. Shout out to MOFMG, he said, live action Lion King. You just put it from a documentary and dub over it. Duh, man. Nah, man, you know, you can't ghetto fire Lion King, bro. Don't, don't ghetto fire Lion King, bro. Lion King, you have to do Lion King justice. You have to do Lion King justice. It's, don't do Lion King like that. You have to.
to give play Lion King the proper respect. Get a real production company. Get somebody behind it who don't have who who's a really talented production. Get James Cameron from Avatar to do the directing. You got to get somebody great with that one. But with Aladdin, don't fuck up Aladdin. Aladdin literally, bro. Aladdin, Aladdin literally formed thirty seven percent of my childhood. Like literally, Aladdin was it was Aladdin was literally one of the best movies in the world. Don't mess up Aladdin. That's my that's my thing. Mess up any other film that you want to, bro. But him, but don't mess up a line. MOFMG said, get Stephen King to F it up. I don't know Stephen King. Oh, Stephen, you mean Stephen, the writer Stephen King? But yes, yeah, so I'm not. So I'm all for these. I'm all for these post these post nineties era California kisses. My baby, what's up with you? Your kisses. I miss her kisses. This is the only. This is the only woman I would let kiss me from my from my from my periscope. But there, I think that I think with I think with um, what was I gonna say? Okolo Men 9, what's up with you? I think that, yeah, this movie suck. Oh, yeah, Steve, Stephen King? I didn't even know he produced movies. I mean, I know a lot of the books that he wrote, wrote became movies, but I don't know if he was actually directing them or producing them. I think with, um, what was I going to say? I, I had it in my head, what was I going to say? So I like I said I like seeing all these I like seeing all these old Disney movies become real life movies on the real on the movie screen. It's cool to me. It's an enjoyable thing to watch, you know. And that's another that's another reason why TBD to be just to support it. I'll be real with you. Like when I get into my zone, California kissing gave me his heart. Shout out to my baby. How you doing, baby? What's going on with you? And that's another reason why I went to CBD to be so also just because. I think to some extent, like, once the podcast and the Periscope and the YouTube Live, once it all pops off, I do want to get into taking some of the scripts that I've written. Hey, my baby, how you doing? What's up with you? Yeah, you never show no love to me. You never come by. You never say hi. You never even send me an email. Like, I feel so lonely sometimes. I think that, I think to some extent, I want to, in the future, I want to get into a place where I'm actually directing and producing movies and taking some of the screenplays. I, I do write screenplays, and I would love to take some of the screenplays I've got and turn them into live action movies to do like the the, the, the dubation on them. Fat Bastard said, what's going on? What's going on with you, baby? What's going on with you, man? G, gotta go see you. See you, my man. I think a lot of, I think I would love I think I would love to do that. Like I would love to take some of the some of the screenplay, some of the music, some of the movies, some of the some of the things that I've written and put them can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can't hear you, okay. But I would love to take some I would love to love to take some of the movies that I that I've written and actually put them in front of a screen. Like I would love I would love that. That would be cool. That would be amazing to me. So I think going to see hmm. I think going to see. I think going. I think going to see Beauty and the Beast. I think it kind of does give me that motivation. That motivation to think like, what would it be like to have the characters that I create, to have the storylines that I've written, have people actually quote the dialogue that I've had. Like it actually would be cool. Fat Bastard said, "What kind of mic do you use?" I'm using a Blue Yeti microphone. Blue Yeti, Blue Yeti microphone. So I think it's cool. So. Overall, I recommend everybody. I recommend everybody who has kids. I'm recommend, recommending people who don't have kids. I'm rec- recommending the ugly guys who need, who need hope that some beautiful woman will see their inner beauty and want to see them and want to be a part of their life. I'm recommending to all you guys to go out there and go out there and watch Beauty and the Beast. It's actually a really great movie. Isn't that what's weird? The funny thing I was thinking about watching that movie was with Beauty and the Beast, and I was thinking about this like with Beauty and the Beast. One of the things I really approved of about it was, and it kind of, I love the magic in the film. I love the magic, you know. And it wasn't too much, it wasn't too little. Like, there's one point in the film, and I hate to spoil it for you, there's one point in the film where the Beast takes Bella into, like, this room where he has a book. Like, not a book, like an atlas, an atlas, like this giant atlas map. And if you put your hand on... If you put your hand on a certain place in the book, like say for example in the atlas, if you put your hand on Jacksonville, Florida, why you want to go to Jacksonville, Florida, I have no idea in the world. You put your hand on Jacksonville, Florida, and you think about it, the book will actually trans- transfer you to there. It will actually transfer you to Jacksonville, Florida, which was strange because so when he shows us that, when he shows her this, right after he literally right after he shows her this, he hands her a mirror that. In the original story, 
it's like this sacred mirror where it has the power to say, like, if you look at the mirror and say, show me, show me Donatello from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, it'll show you Don, it'll show you Donatello sitting on the couch eating pizza, watching Jerry Springer right now. Like, I don't know why he would be watching Jerry Springer, but I'm just giving that an example. It'll show you that. If it, if it, if you say, show me my mother, it'll show you your mother. It basically, it's basically a, it's basically a cell phone. In a lot of ways, it basically was the ba- the first concept for an iPhone without nobody knowing it. So, right after that, he shows her the mirror. He shows her the mirror, and it's just, she says, "Let me see my father." And she sees that her father is actually getting beat up and put into put into a carriage to be sent to the insane asylum, insane asylum, and. She gets mad and the beast is like, okay, you have to go chase your father. You have to go chase your father. You have to go save your father. You have to go be there for him. It's so strange to me because she left the castle on a horse. He just got done showing her this magic trick where you can put your hand on a map and be in the place where you will want to go to. So why didn't he just have her touch the map and transfer there rather than instead of just riding a horse? Because that way you could have took him with you and he could have beat up the guards and took your father there. That way you wouldn't have had the whole climatic scene where dudes come out with pistols and shoot you in the back and you have to die. And they're like, it wouldn't have, you would never have had that whole climatic, that whole climatic scene. So it's, it's, it is a little bit of a contradiction in and of, it, in and of itself. I, I don't think most people are going to. I don't think most people are going to notice that, you know, because I'm just the type of person when I watch the movie, I pay attention to every little detail. I like the way he was dressed too. The beast, the beast actually was dressed pretty cool. Like, I, dude, that's what I keep saying. Like, I would love to be the beast if I could transform into that. If I could transform into the beast, like on will and transform back into being. Okay, yeah, so yeah. They made him look hella cool, but it just was like kind of. They made him look so freaking cool that Chorus Light Girl. Shout out to somebody. Oh, great. We got a girl. Shout out to a girl who tuned in right now. She said she's a Chorus Light Girl. That's sexy. Um. Man, they made him look hella. They made him look hella cool. What are you talking about? I'm talking about Beauty and the Beast right now. I'm talking about Beauty and the Beast. Eight, Anthony C seven four. What's up with you, man? So they made the beast. They actually made the beast look hella cool. I thought it was. I thought it was a pretty tight looking character. You know, in fact, the movie. Yep, the movie. I just went to see the movie yesterday. But I think I, they made him. They made him look really cool. Like I, I, that's what I was saying. Like if I was the beast, if I could transform into the beast for like twelve hours and then transform back like on a regular basis, I'd be cool with that. Was it good, Fat Bastard? Ass? It actually was a really good movie. Like no lie, it actually was a really good movie. And I recommend anybody go. I recommend anybody go see the movie. I would tell anybody you need to go take get off off the couch, get off the couch and go see this movie. You actually would really enjoy it. Tater Batters, shout out to Tater Batters, what's up with you baby? It actually is, it actually is a really, 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 very, very great movie, I enjoy, I enjoyed it a lot, you know, and, and this was just an experience, I like going to the movie theaters, and I, I had said that I was going to do this thing where I'd have theater Thursday and film Friday, where I would go to the theaters and just see a movie, that, a new movie that's coming out this month, because a lot of the good movies came out, a lot of good movies came out this month, <laughs> actually, uh, Kong Skull Island, Logan, Power Rangers is coming out next week. There's another one that's coming out in a few weeks I can't think of. Fat Bastard has what equipment do you use for your podcast? Just this microphone, a few earphones, and an iPad, a phone, and a laptop. So it's a lot of it's, a, it's it's interesting. I think like it's a great like I said, it's a great movie. It was a, it's a great movie. Um. I'm not thinking, I'm trying to think of anything else. I'm trying to think of anything else in the movie that I would want to talk about. Anything else that I'm missing? Anything else? Anything else? Anything else in the movie that I would want to talk about? Anything else? Um, like I said, I like the outfits. I like the design. I like the design of the castle. I like how they set the town setting with the houses. They made it look so authentic too. Like I heard, they made it look so authentic to me. Fat Bastard said, "I heard that movie wasn't good." 
to um, well, everybody is entitled to their own opinion, you know, whether it's a stupid opinion or it's a dumb opinion. Me personally, I think the movie was amazing. But but then that goes both ways because a lot of people saw Fences and thought Fences was a great movie. I personally shout out to Olivia, how you doing, baby? I didn't think Jordan was so with Jermaine. I didn't even think that I didn't even think that uh Fences was a good movie. But I think Beating the Beast is a great movie. So it's just what it is. And that's something I've learned too in life is a lot of times you, a lot of the time, you can't really go off of somebody else's review. Sometimes you have to go see the movie for yourself and get your own personal opinion about the movie. Because, like, say, for example, Assassin's Creed. I saw Assassin's Creed. Before I saw Assassin's Creed, literally every single movie site said that Assassin's Creed was a waste. It was a waste of money. That it was going to be a blow in the movie off in the, in the box office. It wasn't going to do good. Literally everybody trashed it and said it was a terrible movie. I saw the movie and I loved it. I loved the movie. I loved it. I saw it before I saw Fences. And I enjoyed it more than I enjoyed Fences. And I think, and that's why I always say now is a lot of times you can't, you know, if you go, if you look up a movie right now, like say for example, if you look up Beauty and the Beast, or if you look up Logan, if you look up, um, look up, uh, Rotten, look, if you look it up, the first thing is, is this, the first thing that's going to pop up on your search, if you do it on Google, is Rotten Tomatoes, such and such percent, I'm to be 67% liked it, or such and such 85% liked it. You have to always remember that you might not be in that 85% that liked it. You might be in that 15% that didn't like it for whatever reason. Whatever reason. Whether, maybe you have a different taste in movies. Whether you, Maybe you look at movies a little bit differently than most people. You might be in that small percentage that doesn't enjoy the movie. And it is what it is. Like when I watch Beauty and the Beast. If you look at Beauty and the Beast right now. If you Google Beauty and the Beast movie reviews right now. I think it's like a 65% of, or 62%. 62% or 65% liked it. Like, I guess or something like that. I'm in that 65%, 62, 63%. I'm in that 65%. I liked it. I thought it was a good movie. So after why, what's up with you, man? Baby, I was up. Baby, yeah, I was up with you. Because in the movies now, he's making the films. Uh, say that again, say that again, because I didn't know what you were talking about. So that you, you might be, hey, how you doing? How's he to shout the baby gal? What's up with you, baby gal? This girl, anytime you see somebody who has a name, G-Y-A-L, in their name, they usually means they from the Western Islands, from Jamaica, or Barbados, or from Canada, or they just got, they just been listening to them new Drake songs, but I think, I think it's like, what's I gonna say? I had it in my, I had it in my head. I think it's like, um, was fences in the segregation days? Yes, it was. It was set. It was set in the segregation days. So it's like it's kind of like it's kind of like that. I think that um, I don't know. Like I said, it was a great movie. I forgot that because the man was building the fence now. Right in the way you said, I forgot that's how you look now. This <laughs> is stupid. This is stupid. What are we talking about? We're talking about Beauty and the Beast. I just went, I, last night I went and spent $13 of my hard earned cash to go see Beauty and the Beast, which actually was a pretty amazing film. I enjoyed, I enjoyed it a lot. Are you going, to, you got, you actually got kids and you probably should go take the receipt. You got kids, right? They might like the movie. I will say this though, when I went to see the movie, I was the only, I was the only black dude in the, no, you know what, I take that back, because I remember there was a black couple sitting behind me, and there was this one little girl with them, she kept, she kept, she went by herself, oh, hell yeah, hell, oh, hell yeah, there was this black couple behind me, and I remember their daughter was, their daughter was giving like the, she was giving like the best movie commentary the whole, whole theater, she said, Mommy, she don't. When uh, Bell came out, mommy, she doesn't even look like a real princess. Shh, shh. Mommy, you got a purse to look like that. Shut your ass up. Like, it is, it is, it is. It is. People like people, niggas like white people got white people got a misunderstanding. They think that when you go to a movie theater, the funniest thing is hearing black people talk out loud in the movie theater. Which sometimes it is, it is. The funniest thing is, is hearing black parents shush their kids in the goddamn movie theater. That's the fun, that is the funniest thing in the world. You sound like designer dog. Yeah, I don't, I don't know actually. I don't know what designer the regular speaking voice sound like, but that is literally the funniest thing in the world. You're like. Mom, I want candy. I told your ass to eat some candy before you, I told your ass to eat before we got home. Mom, I want a hot day popcorn. Your ass ate, I, you ate before you got here. You ain't that damn hungry. You just got done eating. You just got done eating. Oh, you want to get you that soda? Mom, I didn't want the orange soda. Then watch your ass fall with them. They take you out that theater and wear your ass out. They take you out in the theater and wear your ass out in that bathroom stall. <laughs> you come back in there and you better not cry when we walk in this theater. We going on. <laughs> I'm taking you home if you don't stop crying. I'm taking you home if you don't stop crying. Like, 
I miss them days. I miss them days. I used to. I don't miss them days, but that used to be funny. But yeah, it was a great movie, man. Everybody, everybody. It was a talented cast of people. I don't know. I got. I like movies like that. I liked it because, like, I didn't know. I, one thing I will say is when I went to see the movie, I didn't know that when I was going to go see the movie, there was going to be Yolo Richo, what's up with you? I didn't know that the movie was going to be more of a musical than an actual, just regular movie. Because they did, they did kind of Tyler Perry play me a little bit with a lot of the, the, a lot of the breakout singing songs. Like, I want to buy this piece of bread. Oh, bro, you only have $3. You need 4 or $5. I need 4 or $5? What poverty God has stricken upon me. Like, yeah, like, you have awkward ass breakout moments in song like that. And, it, and it's cool. It's cool. I like it. But at the same time, it's like, it, it do get kind of corny. But it was still a good movie. Like, and when they, it was just so strange because, like, when, when animated with your best, Yolo Retro said your best movie, no. Far from my best movie. I will say out of the last seven Disney movies that I've went to the theaters and seen in the last two years, it probably was my favorite. I liked it more than I liked Jungle Book. I liked it more than I liked Zootopia. I liked it more than I liked uh Fo- I liked it more than I liked Frozen. I don't even know if Frozen is Disney, right? I liked it more than Frozen. Um I liked it more than a lot of those movies. I liked it it was a great movie to me. <laughs> Yeah, and once again, and once again, I'm always, I'm always hella critical on fantasy films because my thing with fantasy films, not to, I say this all the time when it comes to fantasy films. At the end of the day, me personally, I feel I can, I feel I can write a fantasy film better than most people who write fantasy, just because I like to write stories. I, I started out before I even thought about doing podcasts. I used to be a writer. I still, I still do writing sometimes. So. You know what? I've always heard about Pat Cors- Scorsese. I really don't know what his work is. Like, I really can't, don't know what movies he's done. I've always heard about him in Jester and Joke, but I don't really know what movies he's actually done. Like, I don't really know that many movies he's produced. I don't know what characters or books he's read. I don't really know that much about him. The only, like, when it comes to directors, the only directors that I know just by their work are James Cameron... James Cameron, Spike Lee, Tata Battles, what's up with you, Tay? How you doing? James Cameron, Spike Lee. I know Tyler Perry, of course. Um I don't know that many directors just by their work. I don't I just don't. I know Roman Polanski because they had that he had that whole controversy about how he was touching little boys and stuff and then he ran away from the country and still won an award. So I know those dudes, but as far as like just direct spider work, I know Jordan Peele, of course, and I wanna give a big I wanna give a big salute to Jordan Peele. Last night I almost spent an extra ten dollars and went to see Get Out, but I just I had no interest in seeing that movie. I really didn't. Like I I really didn't want to see that movie. And, I, and it, it seems like it's good. It seems like it'd be a good movie. Like I, a lot of people say they like it, but just to me personally, I read really and feel like going to go see them. I might go watch it though. I might show support. I might go watch it. I'll think about it. I, I will, I'll think about it. I'm gonna think about it. Cause Ronnie Noe said it's straight. Yeah, it might be a good movie. It's just like I, you know, like a lot of people. Like I've heard some people, even Charlamagne the God, he was on this podcast and he was talking about how. He said the plot line of the movie, he said it's so believable, like it can actually be something that you could see happening in real life. And my thing about that is, I can't see a white woman using hypnotism. I want to go see it in my opinion. It was in my, I wouldn't go to go see, uh, he said it, Ronnie Noe said, I want to go see it in my opinion, it was pretty good, but didn't live up to its hype. Yeah, like I, I, I don't think, I don't think it's believable for a white woman to know how to do hypnotism so good that she can hypnotize you into putting your soul into somebody else's body and putting their soul into yours and like use you as some goddamn crash dummy for 60 years. I don't think that's like a, a believable plot line. And I'm not criticizing because it is unique and I respect it. The only thing I, do, I will say, even though I haven't seen the movie, the only thing I will say that I appreciate about the movie is this, is I think that I'm proud that there was a black director who said, you know what, I'm going to do a movie with featuring a black lead, but at the same time, I'm going to do it over a different concept. I'm going to build it over a different concept. I'm not just going to do, he's a, um, 
This is a single woman. She has four or five kids. Her baby daddies don't love her. I don't know where she's going to meet this light-skinned dude who rake leaves in her front yard, and he's going to marry her and take her off into Never Never Land. Or, goddamn, he's a thug. She's trying to, she's trying, he's a thug. He's trying to get his life together. He just got out of jail. He did four or five years in jail. He's trying to, like, nobody want to hear it on the Brown Bunny Deluxe. <laughs> Shout out to Brown Bunny. This is somebody who logged in my third school. Her name is Brown Bunny Deluxe. That is, that sounds like a girl who works at Hooters. That is a Hooters. That's some who works at Hooters, I promise you. But I like I I just, I didn't, just didn't work. I just I just don't have any interest in seeing it. But then sometimes I have been wrong with some movies. You're the beast. You're so ugly. You're ugly. Oh, are you? I'm the ugly one, but you have Adolf Hitler as your AVR. If you are so ugly that you are looking at looking at Adolf Hitler for insp- inspiration, inspiration. Trust me, you are ugly. But I will say, I will say, I will say this. I will say this. What was I going to say? What was I, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, but... So, I do... I, my thing about when it comes to movie directors and creators, I do like... I do appreciate more... I do appreciate more creativity when it comes to... Um, when it comes to directing, when it comes to creating a script. And that's the one thing I, I have criticized about movies nowadays. I think, like, nowadays when it comes to movies, I think most of the time... I think most of the time they're just taking these old scripts, these old these old frameworks from forty five. That, that's something I don't like. Yeah, and that's something I really have an issue with. They're just taking these old frameworks from like forty, fifty years ago. They're taking these old frameworks from forty and fifty years ago, and they're just redoing them over and over again. And it's not they're not they're not coming up with any new concepts. They're not coming up with any new material. They're literally just taking these old ass stories and remaking them over and over again. It's like there's not anybody who has any original stories, and there's not anybody who has any original art. Like I got original stories, I got original art. I create it all the time and write it down all the time. Y'all find it so hard. Like these movie producers, these directors, they are so they're so scared to step out of the same. They're so scared to experiment and try different films and to try different stuff that'll work. Like. I do, like I said, and once again, I'm not hating on the live action Disney films. I'm happy that we have them. I'm loving them. It's cool. I loved them. I love Cinderella. I loved Into the Forest. I love Beauty and the Beast. But at the same time, we got to be a little bit more creative than that. I don't want to eat ramen noodles every single day. Sometimes I want steak. Sometimes I want calamari. You got to experiment a little bit. You know, I don't want. I just want that. And matter of fact, they got this one movie that has like this about this little Mexican boy who wants to be a, a mariachi player or a guitar player or something like that. It's like it's called Coco, and I said, I said like I was like Coco, but I'm gonna watch it. So like that movie, I'm gonna watch Coco. I'm gonna watch Coco. Coco, I'm gonna watch Coco. I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch Coco. I'm gonna. I'm going to go. I'm going to watch Coco. Coco is going to be a good. One. Coco is going to be a good one. I'm gonna. I'm going to watch that one. Um, like I want to see a movie that presents me with a plot line that I've never seen before. I want to see a movie that presents me with a plot line, with a concept, with stories, with characters, with powers, with superpowers I've never seen before. And I, I feel like that with everything now. Like man, like all these superheroes, all these movies that we got out nowadays, all they really do, they all of them, they're not really presenting any new information to us. Not anything new. It's literally all the same powers, the same concept, the same stories. Like, you know, Beauty and the Beast. The story itself was written four or five hundred years ago. The Beauty and the Beast storyline was written four or five hundred years ago. This story, this movie was literally written before slavery happened. That's how old this movie was. This movie was literally written before slavery. I mean, the book was literally written before slavery. They've been remaking this book and rewriting it as a book, as a play, as a movie, as a goddamn video game for the last four to five hundred years. Like, surely, surely we live in a day and age where we have more originality than that. Surely, surely, surely. Surely, 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 surely we do. But I just this is my this is my this is my that's just my that's just my that's just my personal opinion. That's just my personal opinion. That's just my personal opinion. Um, I think I think that a lot of the time I don't know. I think like a lot of the time, like a lot of these movies, like it's more. Um, like I said, we just need more creativity. And like I said, I've all like I said this, I've been saying it a dozen times. I do appreciate, I do appreciate the beating the beast. I do appreciate beating the beast. I do appreciate all these Disney movies coming back in the style. But at the same time, Becky Flowers, shout out to my lady Becky Flowers. What's up with you, baby? How you doing? 
I do I do want to see some more new movies. I do want to see some new movies. I do want to see some new plot lines. I do want to see some new characters. I do want to I just want to see some new stuff. I want to see some more I want to see some more creativity into films. You know, that's just my personal opinion. So um yeah, with that being said, I guess I'm going to um I might have to end the pod. I might have to end the podcast early because I gotta go. I gotta go shopping for my auntie. I gotta go get her some birthday. I gotta get her a birthday gift. Her birthday's coming up soon. I'm gonna start the pod. You know, I'm gonna start the podcast over again. But last words, last words of advice to all my people out there. I highly recommend that you spend thirteen dollars. Take your girlfriend. Take your child. Take your dog. Or sorry, movie theaters don't allow dogs inside. And go see Beauty and the Beast. This is an excellent movie. I highly recommend it to everybody. Uh, I'm gonna start probably gonna do another podcast right now, or just cancel out and do 